So notice that it had to apply a whole different tax schedule. You got the progressive tax schedules and now a different tax schedule for that $1,000, which had to be at 15% because the income threshold for this individual was a single individual and they were between uh, this range, 100,000, therefore it taxed them at 15%. So you can see what it's doing. It's just trying to pick a percent where it's gonna tax at a favorable rate. Uh, and that and that happened to be the 15 in this case. So let's go back on over. Now, if you were to 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 change the scenario to say that the income was below below a certain threshold of uh, 40,000, then the, the rate would be zero, right? Because then 15 percent. Uh, let's say uh, there are 15 percent would be too high. You wouldn't get a benefit from the favorable rate for lower income individuals. So if I change this down to to uh, their income, say, wages to like 35,000 and say this is zero. And now we're gonna say, okay, so now we've got 35,000. If I, and, and let's, let's say that, uh, they, that, that we don't have any dividends at first. Let's pull the dividends out. Let's pull the dividends out to start with. No dividends, boom, 35,000 W-2 income. And so so let's mirror that over here, 35,000, 35,000, boom. And then standard deduction, and that gets us to the 2350 standard deduction, but I still have 35, 36, because I still have the dividends in there take the dividends out and so so there we have 35 that gets us to the 2250 2250 page 2 calculated at 2444 so now we're at the 2444 right and then if i add the dividend income so let's say all right let's add dividend income boom dividends dividend that's not dividends what are you doing capital total let's just make it ordinary so they're not qualified so it should be taxed at the ordinary income rates so now we added the dividends so i'm going to say all right let's do that on my worksheet over here dividends schedule b 1000 boom and then that pulls over to the 1040 36000 we should be at the 2350 and so if i go to page or the bottom of the page 2350 tax is now at the 2564 so let's say it was before 2444 now it's at 20564 no that's not right that's quite high it's at the 25464 where did i get the zero from where did that come from that's a little bit different slightly different number 2564 so that's a change of 120 which, which means it was taxed, that extra thousand dollars was taxed at 12%. So if I, if I went back on over here and said, okay, what's my tax rates? The ordinary rate, the highest rate is 12%. So if I then said the dividends were taxed at just a flat 15%, that would be a disincentive to invest. Therefore, it has to be some number that's under that. So it should be taxed at zero. Zero, zero, zero. So in other words, if I went back on over here and said, okay, $1,000 qualified dividends, now I should have the same first page, except now their qualified dividends included in here. The taxable income has not changed, 2350, 2350, but on page two, now we're at the 2444, uh, which is which is basically you know what it was before because we didn't have any tax applied to it so it had the zero rate that is being applied to it so now we're at two four 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 and it didn't tax even though we included or increased taxable income there's no tax now so notice the software pretty nicely and easily does that calculation for us but when we explain this now to a client and we say well what's the benefit of having something in ordinary what does that even mean what is it doing what is it doing? Well, the government's trying to give us a tax benefit for putting money into the, I'm trying to find 
my, they're trying to give us a tax benefit for putting money into the corporation and, and deal with this double taxation stuff if they're U.S. corporations and qualified corporations and whatnot. And, and, but you're going to see that tax benefit not in your taxable income. It'll still be included in taxable income, but it's going to apply a favorable tax rate is the, is the general idea. Now, let's, let's make this go over the threshold so Schedule B will show up now. So I'm going to say, let's go back to the other scenario. Let's say that it was 100,000 back to 100,000. And let's say we had 15,000 here. And then let's say that we had another dividend. Let's say another dividend from a 1099 Corp, Corp 2, Corp number 2. And let's say this was, was 13,000. And let's say 500 of it was qualified or whatever. Uh, 500 of it was qualified. So now if I go back on over, now you, you're going to have on page one, the amount uh, here of the, of the 1,500 are qualified portion of the total 14,000 total dividends between the two. And we now have a schedule B, which is going to show the the dividends over here corporation one and corporation uh number two so we've got the total dividends kind of listed out by corporation that pulls in to the first page of uh the form 1040. i won't run that out on the on our excel because we're getting kind of it's going kind of long i just want i do want to point out on excel though that over here you might you might like this is pulling into the income line but you might want another column like this for the qualified qualified portion just for your data input qualified uh, purposes so you can kind of see it over here even though whether it's qualified or not it's going to pull over to the income line so if there was a portion of this that was qualified i could say okay i'm just going to show that on my my form over here and i could say whatever of the thousand you know 200 was qualified or whatever the whole thing on that one was qualified let's see if this is spelled right did i spell that right i did of course i did why am i even checking For crying out loud did i spell it right who do you think i'm a spelling master anyways let's take a look at a situation where we had a capital gain situation now so if you see something on the capital gain uh we'll talk about capital gains later but capital gains, you usually think, well, that's the sale of the stocks and bonds for most people, but you might see it on that 1099 div. Most data input software is going to have this box for the capital gain distributions. And if I just put whatever's on the 1099 in this box, like $300, then it's going to pull over, not as a dividend, even though it was distributed in like kind of a dividend, but rather down here in the capital gain schedule D situation uh, uh, item. So we'll talk about capital gains more later, but the general concept, if you, if you see that here, would generally be, you might have a question like, why would that uh, be put there? Because the distributions that came out were given like a dividend. May they make beautiful dividends together. And, but they didn't come out of like the retained earnings. They came out of the investments from the original issues of, of the stock or something like that. That's why you might have like a, a distribution, like a dividend distribution that's reported this way uh, and being reported like a capital gain kind of situation possibly, even though you didn't actually sell the stock. So if you were to just plug that into the software, that's uh, that's what it will come up to. We'll talk more about uh, the Schedule Ds because that can come up to another situation where you have these capital gain rates, which might be different than ordinary income rates for another similar kind of reason. So we have another kind of situation where the actual tax calculation over here usually is based on the progressive tax system, based on filing status. But now we have this other exception for a different whole set of progressive tax systems. If we had qualified dividends and then when we get into capital gains, you might have a whole nother set of tax rates and whatnot that are based on uh, capital gains for other reasons we'll get into in another time.